Hi guys, my name is Kevin and today I'm going to show you the best way to test your angular material components. First, we are going to have a look at the classic approach to test material components. Then we are going to dive into harness testing, which is a much nicer approach to test your angular material components. Sounds good? Let's do it! Imagine a small application that shows Game of Thrones characters in an angular material table. The table can be filtered by using these radio buttons or by entering a text into the input field. Even though this is a very small application, for sure we have to test it. I mean, come on, we are professionals. If you look at this application, there are a bunch of test scenarios that come to my mind. For example, we want to test that the table is filtered accordingly if we select a radio button or enter a text into the input field. Let's test the first scenario. We want to test that all the alive characters are filtered out if we select a dead radio button. Let's approach this in a traditional way. To do so, let's first get a hold of the radio button. To get a hold of the radio button, we are going to use the debug element on the fixture and we are going to use a classic CSS query to target our dead radio button. So we query the radio button by its ID, which is called dead filter. Once we got a hold of the dead radio button, of course, we are going to click it. So we are going to click on its native element. Once we clicked on the element, we are going to get a hold of the material table rows because we want to assert that the rows were filtered accordingly. To do so, we again use the fixture.debug element and this time we are going to query all the rows, not just one element, but multiple elements. So we are going to query the material table and then the table body and all the table rows. To ensure that the material table gets filtered correctly, we are going to run our assertions. So we expect that the rows of length is equal to five. Why five? Because in the running application, we can see if we apply the dead filter, the material table is filtered down to five characters. So let's run this. If you run this test, it fails. It fails with the message expected eight to be five. That sounds like the material table was not filtered at all. The reason for that lies in the way how material is implemented. Remember that in our test, we are using the fixtures debug element to get a hold of the dead radio button. So let's do the same here in the console. So if we run document query selector dead filter, we get a hold of exactly this radio button. But the interesting thing is that if we call the click function of this dead filter, nothing happens. So nothing is selected. And the reason for that is because internally material doesn't have a click handler attached to the host. The click handler is actually attached to a mud radio container, which is inside the dead radio. If we hover this mud radio container, we see that this is the actual radio button. So if we now execute the click handler on this element, we can see that the dead radio button is actually selected. So let's take this information and adjust our test. So instead of querying the dead filter, we are going to query the material radio container. Let's rerun our test and see if it's green now. It's still failing and it still fails with the exact same error message. So the filter is still not applied. We are now guaranteed that our click handler works. So it must be something else. Mm, maybe change detection? To manually run change detection, we are going to execute the method fixture.detectChanges. And our test is green. Also be aware that in some scenarios, sometimes you need to do a fixture.when stable to wait for a stable fixture and then pass down a callback. If you need to do something like this, then it's super important that you use a done callback and call this done callback inside this, the promise handler. Otherwise, your test may pass even if in reality it's actually read. That's the traditional way of testing your Angular material components. A major downside of this approach is that you rely on internal implementation details of Angular material. You need to know which element of Angular material has the click handler attached to it. 
So in our case, we need to know that the MET radio container has the click handler attached to it and not the host itself. This approach is furthermore cumbersome because imagine Material one day decides to do an internal refactoring and they want to rename the MET radio container. So the behavior would still be the same, but your test would break and it's very hard to figure out why your test breaks. Another downside of this approach is that you need to take care of change detection yourself. So you have to figure out when to call fixture detect changes and when to actually call change detection. And in some scenarios, you even have to figure out when is it necessary to wait for a stable fixture and when not. And if you need to do something like this to wait for a stable fixture, it's super important that you don't forget about the done callback, which can easily be forgotten. So there are various downsides to this approach and it's very error prone. So how can we improve our testing? And the answer to that is Angular Material Harness Tests. Harness tests are basically test classes. They are heavily inspired by page objects. The whole harness implementation is provided by the Angular Material CDK and you can use them also for your own custom component libraries. The Material team also uses them internally and provides for each Material component they provide us a harness object. So let's write the exact same test next to this test using Angular Material Harness. To get started with harness testing, we first need to get a hold of a loader. To store the loader, we are going to create a, a variable that is of type harness loader. And then inside our before each hook, we can instantiate this loader. So we can say testbed harness environment, harness offers multiple environments. So this is the environment for unit testing. And there is also a protector harness environment. So we can say, okay, we want to get a loader and pass in the fixture. That's everything that is required for the setup. We are going to test the exact same functionality, but this time with harness style. The first thing you have to do when you start harness testing is to mark your callback function as async. Harness testing heavily works with async await, which we will see in a minute. The concept of the test itself remains the same. Again, we are going to get a hold of the radio button. But here already comes a big difference. Instead of using the fixture to get a hold, we are going to use our loader. The loader function returns a promise and therefore we are going to use the await keyword. So we want to get a harness for the material radio button. So we can type it with material radio button harness and then we can say, okay, we want to get the material radio button harness with and here to this with we can pass in a selector which is again a normal CSS selector. So we say we want to get the radio button with the, with the dead filter ID. Instead of using a CSS selector, we can see that the material radio button harness also offers us a radio button harness filters. And these harness filters have like various options, for example, label. Let's quickly check that out. So we can see that the radio button harness filter also offers us a label or a name. Instead of querying the correct radio button by the selector, we could also query it by label or name. Next, we need to get a hold of the table. And again, to get a hold of the material table, we can just call our loader and get the hardness and then call material table hardness. And since we only have one table on the page, there is no need to actually use the with function and pass in a selector. If you only have one, the harness object will return the one that is on the page. We got a hold of our radio button and we got a hold of the table. What we now want to do is to select the dead radio button. To do so, we can use the dead radio harness and we can already see that IntelliSense is so nice that it gives us a couple of functions that are provided by the harness object. So we could blur the button, we can check it, we can focus it, we can get the ID, get name, get value and so on. All this is provided by material. And imagine if they now in change internally something, then they would also adjust their harness and you never have to care. So it's completely encapsulated and abstracted away. So in our case, we just want to check the button and therefore we call the check function. 
Again, this returns a promise and therefore we are going to use the await keyword. Another nice side effect about this check function is that internally the harness objects care about change detection. So we don't have to care about change detection anymore, which is great, because this reduces the complexity of our test by so much. The last thing missing is to actually run our the last thing missing is to run our assertion. So we can write expect table.get rows. Again, the table offers us multiple functions, header rows, footer rows. We could even get the cell text by index or by column name, but we want to get, get the rows. And then dot length. And we expect them to be five. Let's run this and it's green. So let's again compare those two tests. If we look first at the harness test, it's pretty readable. It's, it has a natural flow. So we get a hold of the radio button, we get a hold of the table, we call radio.check and then we expect that the rows are of length five. While on the other hand, the classic test is much more complicated. We also get a hold of the radio button, but the way we get a hold is already more confusing. So why do we have to query the mat radio container and cannot just query the radio button? Then next, we also need to say on this line that we want to click on the native element, which is again a bit of boiler code that makes it less readable. Then we have to call the detect changes and eventually when stable and handle this, then again, to get the rows is much more complicated. And another downside is that we again rely on material internal implementation details. Harness testing is pretty epic. Harness testing is pretty epic. Material provides harness objects for all their components. Harness testing allows you to write more readable, more maintainable tests. And you don't have to care about change detection anymore. You don't rely on internal. Your tests are stable means they will not break if material does some internal refactorings and it's just more fun to write them. If you like this video, don't hesitate to also check out my blog post on test your component with Angular Materials component harness, which is available on Medium. Also make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel or to follow me on Twitter. Twitter is usually the place where I post updates about new things in front-end technology, new blog posts, new open source libraries or new video tutorials. See you next time.